stores today. We're going to be trying to eat Russia crabs for, uh, you know, flats fish that live in the salt water as if they live anywhere else. But uh, in the vise, we have a Daiichi 2546 size 2 using a Vivas 140D brown thread for our underbody here. We're going to go ahead and make connecting turns all the way down the hook shank. You can see a little hack right there is I, I keep the thread tag pretty long and it helps you just to stack that thread moving forward. I do a few wraps moving forward just to uh, clear it as I cut. And next up I have three Vernio, Vernil, or uh, these are legs. They look like an earthworm color. It's about the best I could tell you. I burn the ends and these are going to create the legs of our crab. I take pretty loose wraps moving down the hook shank forward. Um, not ever going to see this, so it just needs to get secured in. So at this point we've tied a really ugly San Juan worm, but uh, we'll improve on it, I promise. Next up I'm going to take two more sets of legs, and you can see I start my thread um, in about an eighth of an inch. And again, I'm not concerned about the beauty or how everything kind of lays out in there. This will all be hidden, but the reason for the staggered tie-in points is because the legs are going to come out of the fly at a different area. This is a uh, like a medium tungsten eye, uh, dumbbell eye. You can substitute in with bead chain, uh, brass, whatever you uh, see fit here. Um, I designed these just to get down really quick and really scoot along the bottom. If you get a little bit overboard like I did, the legs will get in your way. But uh, they're offset eyes as well, so I kind of rotate them to create a flat spot. Next up are some mono eyes, and these are actually made with some 40 pound mason hard mono and uh, UV resin with tungsten powder. So even the eyes are adding some weight to help keel this fly if they were in like a heavy current situation. This helps to keep the fly riding properly and down where you want it so the fish will eat it. So I'm just securing these in with figure eight wraps, um, just flat across, and you'll see here. And what I'm going to do is I actually just trim the eyes as flush to the dumbbells as possible. Next up, I'm going to apply some flow. And like I always say, it's to kind of chemically bond or fiberglass your materials throughout the hook. And that flow really penetrates down in there. So next up we have these grizzly tips and I've prepared them by cutting a V out of the front and stripping the excess off and I'm going to put those in kind of right over the eyes and facing outwards. This will simulate like a claw type uh, look for this pattern and it does get a little bit tricky up front here just because you're resting that in between the eye and the dumbbell eye. So you can see I, I kind of struggle with getting it to sit right where I want it, but overall we'll be, you know, we'll win and be victorious. And if they're not right where you want them, at the end of this pattern, we are going to UV resin the whole bottom. So that'll help to kind of provide some support, and you'll see that later on. We'll just trim off the ends, and now you kind of have these uh, cool looking crab eyes. So next up, this is a funny material. Looks like a marshmallow, but it's uh, McFly foam. And uh, guys who tie egg patterns uh, swear by this stuff that it's the easiest way to tie an egg. Um, I swear it's the easiest way to create a really cool bulky head with a synthetic material. It's, uh, it has a lot of elasticity to it and it crushes down to pretty much nothing so as long as you put some good tension on your thread wraps 
you're never actually going to see the the McFly foam. <clears throat> So you can see I kind of stretch it um, just to level it out. And these are huge balls of McFly foam on here. Um, it's, it's really overkill. But you can see I just kind of keep working forward, uh, kind of creating these stations of the fly foam. It's a nice synthetic material. It comes in like 60 colors or something. It's, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, but it just allows you to build some really cool different parts to flies, sculpin heads, stuff like that. Um, so my last but not least, I'll just move forward and I do a whip finish right at the front of the fly. That whip finish actually will help to spread those front legs out as well, or sideways legs because crabs do tend to run sideways. So. The next step is really to take this from looking like a hermit crab into just your standard crab. I just attack it with uh, various dubbing tools <laughs> and I'll go ahead and just start trimming away. And unfortunately you need a longer length to get the crab pattern to splay out kind of like you were tying a uh, you know, an, an, a trout egg or a salmon egg or stuff like that. So uh, there's a little bit of waste here. There's really not a way to get around it perfectly. But you can see I'm just starting to cut. Little bit by little bit, we carve out a uh, crab shell. It's kind of like a pointy oval. And it's still pretty thick up top, so we still have this like thick marshmallow look that uh, we will have to tame here shortly. You can see I kind of pulled all the materials down out of the way, so I don't actually cut off a leg or uh, any of the other more pertinent parts to our fly that we've taken our time to put in there. And you can really start sculpting it. Good pair of razor scissors uh, seems to be the best for me. Um, tried razor blades and other stuff and it doesn't seem to work out really quite that well. Uh, this material does tend to stick to itself so, so you know you gotta kinda clean up as you go to see where you're at with this pattern. And I just kind of continuously crimp and, and trim away anything that I don't want. And once we have everything in position and our, you know, seemingly desired shape and uh, leg action, We'll go ahead and uh, bring in some thin. I like to use the thin. It does absorb a little bit deeper than thick while still maintaining a really nice build. It also does add weight. So again, it's helping to keel this fly so it rides hook point up through the flats. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set this with the UV light for the required 10 or so seconds. And now we have a nice rock solid bottom. I'm going to go ahead and uh, create some, some modeling with uh, various permanent markers just to create some realism in this crab pattern. Do like a tan and an olive color. And you can manipulate this, this pattern to look however you want. Um, it's a pretty generic version, but. Uh, you know, just look at uh, pictures of crabs that live on the flats and go from there. There you see the UV bottom, and uh, that's the Crusher Crab. Thanks for watching.